If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Wednesday, August 14th, 2013. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. Joining me on the show very shortly in the Finise Monitor will be Mallory Wegeman. She participated in the 2012 Paralympics and collected a gold medal in the 50 freestyle. And this year, her goals are much bigger than winning races or achieving best times. The 24-year-old has been paralyzed from the waist down since 2008 and has held out hope that she will be able to walk again, either using her own legs or some assistance. This year, she started an online campaign to raise money to purchase an artificial set of leg braces and crutches that will allow her to have the mobility she hasn't known in five years. And joining us now on Skype to talk about it from her home in Minnesota is Mallory Wegeman. Mallory, it's great to see you again. How are you today? I'm good. It's great to see you as well. Thanks for having me on. Our pleasure. So let's talk about this fundraising campaign you have going on Indiegogo.com. Uh, your goal, is, I believe, is $50,000 to get a set of leg braces and crutches to help you, uh, I want to put it in quotes, to be able to walk again. Um, now, I, like yeah. uh, now, I read stories all the time about the rising cost of health care, especially for disabled people. So give us an idea of how, much, how far that $50,000 will go for making this possible. You know, the... The price tag on it is a big part of it's crucial because my insurance doesn't, uh, they won't be covering any of the costs. So that's what's leaving me with this grand price tag on this dream of mine to walk. And part of the reason why is because I have been a stable T10 complete paraplegic since my injury in 2008. And I don't have the ability to regain any function back. Um, therefore, my insurance doesn't see this as a cure of any sort or any of that so this is all elective so they're not covering the costs which are kind of leaving them on my own um you know and these costs are really going to go the leg braces are completely customized and the program that i'll be i'm going to have to work with trainers and individuals to really help me adjust assuming all goes well to being upright as since i don't have feeling or movement from my paralysis level down it's kind of going to be this really odd sensation and you know it's going to be really training my upper body and where I do have that movement terms how to how to move about in that way so I will actually be relocating to Detroit during this program and working with individuals there as I do this and I'll be training there as well but it'll kind of this stuff will also help um, the campaign and hopefully the funds raised will help with relocating for those four to five weeks and with program costs and the leg braces and all of that. Knowing this is an elective procedure, was there ever any thought in your mind, well, I guess I probably shouldn't do this. It's gonna be a little too much money and to to be able to make this happen. You know, there, there was. Um, I actually started dreaming about being able to do this um, a few years back. The same program, they did a story on a paralyzed bride was what they called the story and she had been paralyzed for a few years and her and her fiance were getting married and she dreamed of walking down the aisle and much like myself she did not have the ability to regain any function and so she went to this program and learned how to use her upper body with the help of leg braces and arm crutches um, to move forward on her feet and I followed her story through and through during that entire progress and it um, it inspired me to want to be able to do the same thing someday. And, you know, there's been different times where for quite a while I didn't really know that it cost this much to do um, because it d varies on individuals and their insurance programs and what the specifics are of it. Um, but then I got to a point where I found out the price tag and that was disheartening. Um, and then I also, it was a lot of, you know, deciding about the timing of it because I am still a current athlete and I'm still chasing down you know, my Paralympic 
dreams have continued on to 2016 and they'll probably continue on to 2020. And so it's something where, you know, I kind of also have to look at the four year quad. And even though I will be training as well while I'm there, it still is going to take a toll on my body. And so it's, you know, finding the right time to do it. And I feel like it's kind of now or again in four years. And so I'm hoping I'm trying to chase it right now. Yeah, better to do it at the beginning of the, the quadrinium than, say, 2015. Yeah, it probably wouldn't be a good time. <laughs> now, before we go any further, I want to give viewers uh, a background on the nature of your paralysis. You went in to get an epidural in 2008 to treat some back pain, correct? Yes. And then, um, as, you, as you have said numerous times, you went in, you walked into this clinic, and you never got the chance to walk out. So you've been... Um, getting around primarily with a wheelchair. Is that right? Yes, solely with a wheelchair. And uh, and it's just been really interesting how you were a swimmer before all this, um, competitive yep. swimmer, and you got back in the water almost not right away, but a few months later, and then all of a sudden you're a Paralympic gold medalist. I mean, it just, I guess it kind of makes everybody uh, realize that even in the worst tragedy, some some bright lights can happen. Definitely. You know, it's uh, swimming for me in a lot of ways. It was my it was my therapy. It was my way of grieving. It was how I handled the situation. You know, I've been a swimmer competitively since I was seven. And it's kind of that place where the water is just home. And, you know, growing up, anytime I'd have a bad day at school or something would be going on, I always looked forward to practice. And there's something about being in the pool and doing a workout. You know, we all we always joke that, oh, staring at a black line all day, every day. But there's something peaceful about that and something very healing about that. And after my injury, I thought it was over. I, I didn't know about the Paralympics. I had no idea this world even existed. And then I learned about it kind of serendipitously through um, the trials in 2008. And I had just gotten out of the hospital and I went and watched as a spectator. And from the moment I've gotten back in the water, it's been that same thing. It, it helped me move forward with my life. It helped me grieve. It helped me understand that, you know, I don't have to be limited by my wheelchair. Like, there's so many things that I can do. And although I may not be able to move about in the way that I used to for majority of my life, I can still do everything. I just, I just might have to do it a bit different. You know, I might have to adapt things, but that doesn't mean it has to stop me from doing things. And... You know, that's what I love about the Paralympics, about the Paralympic movement and just about everything. It just, I think it gives that hope and inspiration to people. And I think that's a really special thing. I want to play a video that you posted on your Indiegogo.com uh, site uh, where you really got to the heart about why you really want wanted to go to this clinic and uh, be able to get the opportunity, as we said in air quotes, to be able to walk again. So I want to show viewers a little bit of that clip. My biggest fear since I became paralyzed has always been that someday I will forget what it feels like to stand and walk. That someday that feeling will become a distant memory, and if and when it does, it will make it that much harder to hold on to the hope that someday I will walk again. Over the past couple of months, this fear has turned into a reality for me. That feeling is rapidly slipping out of my hands, and it feels as though I can't hold on to it tight enough. I worry what happens if I can't remember it. Will I ever be able to walk again if I lose that memory? So basically, when you are when you go to this clinic in Detroit, it's not to help you walk on your own with your own two legs. It's basically giving you the help to be able to at least just get some upright mobility, correct? Yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of that unfortunate situation. Um, I think everybody who's been injured later in their life with whatever injury, in my case, it's paralysis. You try to hold on to this resemblance of hope and you try to, you know, not lose hope. And it's hard because you also have to allow yourself to move forward with life. And, you know, when I started seeking this out, it was really hard when I heard those words when I was paralyzed and the year after that and the year after that, that I would never walk again. And, you know, but then the reality sunk in that, you know, although I may never walk again the way that I used to, and I may never be able to regain any function, you know, 
one of the things that my swimming has given me is it's given me an incredible upper body strength. And with that, I can manipulate, you know, using the assistance of leg braces. I can, you know, use my core to swing my legs forward. Um, but for me, it was, it was, it was tough to hear that, you know, I, I would never be able to regain the use of my legs, but it was also nice to know that, you know, although that is the case, there's, there's great devices out there such as leg braces and now there's the exoskeleton, you know, devices and all those things that are allowing individuals in my situation who are, you know, that, that's it. They're allowing them to get up and be upright and have that feeling. And that's great mentally and physically and psychologically. And it's just, I'm excited for that day whenever it comes. And I'm really excited to share that with my family, especially. Sure, you probably are feeling some, not, not feeling great about the fact that you're not in Montreal this week for the World Championships. Yeah, it's, it's been tough. Um, I love competing and being a part of Team USA. It is... It's my happy place, and I love being a part of that team and, you know, just being able to get up and race. Um, but this year, you know, the, the stars, they just did not align for me to be in Montreal. Um, unfortunately, I fell incredibly ill at trials um, with a very, very severe kidney infection, and I was not able to perform where I needed to be to make the team. And, you know, quite honestly, I, I believe everything happens for a reason, and as even though it was really hard to not be able to be there, you know, it's the beginning of the quad and I've been able to do some things that, you know, I may not have otherwise gotten to do. And it's really allowed me to focus on other things right now, you know, continue focusing on my training, but also do a few other things. Um, I would love to be there, but, you know, so far Team USA is doing great and it's a blast to watch those results. And, and it probably fuels your motivation for next year. Of course, of course. <laughs> Racing, I think, Everybody at that level. I mean, if you don't like to race, I don't know how you how you get to that level. Right, so right. It's always fun to race, and I'm definitely excited to get back in. And I've been racing, but get back in at that international stage again. Just want to let people know the fundraising deadline is September 8th. And as of this taping, you've raised $7,000, and we just hope it grows exponentially with each day. Thank you so much. Well, it's our pleasure to talk to you, Mallory. Good luck with the fundraising. Good luck with all the training. We're, we're going to be looking forward to seeing you back in the pool and racing for more medals and, um, and uh, just getting better on the road to Rio. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, so that was Mallory Wegeman joining us on today's edition of the Morning Swim Show. We're putting the URL of the Indiegogo website where you can go to donate on Mallory's cause right here. So once you get to the site, search for Against All Odds. That's going to be the place where you go to donate to Mallory's efforts to walk again. And that's going to do it for today's edition of the Morning Swim Show. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.